the longest engine build I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> it's, it's taken a while. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Dumpster to Dino. We're back here with Brighton and we're going to be working on some connecting rods, yeah. right? What, what episode is this actually? I don't know. Like, I've six lost or something now? Something yeah. like that. Well, this, <laughs> this video, we're actually going to be finishing it up, right? This finishing is the up the, the, all the machining. Right, yeah. The machining part to it. Yep. And uh, we're going to be doing the rods in this video and uh, getting this thing ready for you to be to build it. So assemble it, yeah. yeah. So we're uh, reconditioning all the rods, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. stay tuned for that. It's a fun episode and uh, hope you like it. Let's get to it. First uh, thing we need to do is get these washed up so that we can assemble them and put our new bolts in them. So take them apart and set them in here. What does clipping mean and what, what does that do? So we already did this when you were gone, okay. but I forgot to tell you this, but we went ahead and clipped this surface here, which means we went and ground this surface down here and this surface on the main cap. And we only do this on the 12 valves because they, first of all, they have a flat surface so they can, but also if these have been rebuilt before, they might already be maximum of the spec. So when we clip these caps down, it makes the cap smaller. Mm -hmm. Right, makes so the makes the whole diameter smaller so that we can go and rehone it out and make it round again. Oh, uh, okay. And make it to proper spec. Uh, okay. But we only do that with twelve valves because the yeah. common railroads have a, a break the broke or whatever yeah. you call them. Right. So on these, you can tell which cap is which by on the twelve valves they have a number here. Okay. So you can see AL seventeen three zero one. This is fifteen nine five zero. Here's your, here's the one for this one right here. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and find all our main caps. And then we're gonna be putting these ARP bolts in them. These are our ARP bolt. They're 9 16 head. So they're a really big head. And uh, so that these can have a way better clamping force. And these are just a way better bolt than the stock bolt. And we're gonna be putting these in these rods. Okay. Just take your little brush here, okay. and you're gonna go put lube on all these these surfaces. We gotta put it under the head of the bolt, and so that it slides okay. better and gets to the proper torque. So go ahead and put lube on all your bolt surfaces there. Get some more, and you're gonna put lube on all your bolts, just like this. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. Make sure that all your bolts are lubed up. I like to put lube on all the thread. My little brush here. Good now you enough. can start finding your matches. 950, 950. And then you can start putting your bolts in. Make sure you start them by hand first and then we can Zip them in a little bit. That was a first try right there. Can you believe that? It's the longest engine build I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> it's, it's taken a while. <laughs> you know, when you can only... I guess that's how it works when we all live in 200 miles away from each other. Yeah. And you can only make it happen once a month or something like that. You remember how to torque still. I, I remember you guys ate me up last time. 
So we're gonna put use this clamp to hold the rod for us and then they get torqued to 90 foot pounds. 90, and you already set that up? Yeah, it should be set up. Okay. What I like to do is I do a pull, a pull, and then I go 90, 90. A pull. And then on this one. Okay. Pull. 90. Went a little too high there. Okay. All right, we got all these torqued now, so they're basically ready to be machined now. But before we hone them, we're gonna go ahead and press these bushings out of them. As you can see, they have these old bushings in them. Okay. We go through and put new bushings in every single rod that we do. It's just something we like to do. A lot of people don't do that, but um, we like to do it. We like to have yeah. a brand new bushing in every rod that we do. So let's go ahead and push these out right here. And I'll show you how to do one. I've, we got these tools here. See that this fits in there and then it also has the same. A, like a taper? Or something. Yeah, basically okay. a puzzle piece right there. Yeah. Then we have this press here. There's your bushing right there. Just like that. Okay. Now you gotta go through, push all these out. Okay. Just like that. Yep. Then you kinda, yeah. All the way down like that? And then make sure that this is all the way back, just like that. Okay. Because if not, this will push this up. Make sure that's caught under okay, this. Okay, I see. Yeah. So when you're pushing them, okay. Yep. And just step on the pedal and go. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Oh, other way. Wrong way. Watch your fingers. And hold on to that as it comes out. Huh? Hold on to that, yeah, and then keep going. Keep going? Because it's going to drop here in a soon. There it goes. Okay. And then you can push that top one. There you go. That's good. Then you can push your pedal down before it goes all goes the way up. Too so far. That then you don't have to wait for it to come all the way back down again. Okay. All right, guys, as you've seen from earlier, I was talking about um, how we were clipping the caps. And as you can see here, this is putting us at a right about under three thousandths now. My, my zero up here, my zero up here, as you can see, is my minimum spec for the coming spec. And so these are now negative three thousandths under. So that gives us three thousandths to hone out of these things to make them round again and to, and to get them back to base metal. We clip the cap usually around two to three thousand, which is gonna shrink. We clip, we cut off oh, the that, cap like right. this. Yeah. Two to three thousand, so this is gonna be shrunk two to three thousand. So it's not round anymore. But this side is still gonna be roughly the same. So now we have to go and get it round again, but that gives us that three thousandths to take out of the Okay. So okay. now so now this rod is finished, honed now. And as you can see. I've got it up to my minimum spec, which is about zero. And then on, as we check this out around, they should be exactly the same. Perfect. So now we know that we're perfectly round, we're perfectly in spec. So now I'm gonna go through and do the same thing to all the rest of the rods and then we can uh, do the bushings on them. Another cool thing is on this gauge, my gauge reads is in tenths of a thousandth. So that's if you took a thousandth of an inch and split it in half ten times. And you can see that this rod is perfectly round within a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. Which is absolutely amazing. Alright, we got all the bushings pressed out. 
The rods are honed, and so the next step is to press these bushings in. And then we have a special process that we do after the bushings are pressed in, and we'll show you that here in a second. So, <clears throat> these are just brand new bushings, right? Yep. Those are, got all these bushings prepped, and they're ready to go in now. All right. This is my little alignment tool so I can make sure that the bushing is going in straight. Bang, we got our bushing pressed in. Our hole is perfectly lined up. And she's ready to be on to the next process. If you get it pressed in there and it, and it isn't lined up perfectly, what do you do, press it back out yeah. and start over? Yeah, so if I, for some reason, if I didn't press it in properly in this oil, because this is where the oil feeds into these 12 valve rods, mm -hmm. some of them are different. Some of them don't have this hole and they'll actually feed in through the bushing a different way. Like on this bushing here, you can see it has a hole, but on the common rail there is no hole. But you can see how this oh. has a channel right here. Yeah. And so the oil is able to feed in in the bushing there. On these 12 valve rods, you can see how it's cut off right there. It doesn't feed, it does, this channel doesn't the channel come all doesn't the way out to the, the end. Yeah. So the oil has to go into this top hole here. So you have to make sure, there's two different bushings for the 12 valve rods. So if you have one with a hole, Usually I put a bushing with a hole in it, but you could also use the other bushing for the one with the hole, but the one without the hole, you can't use the bushing with the hole. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. So as long as this rod, this bushing can get oil, we're good. So. so what this machine does is after we press these bushings in, it goes on here and it's gonna swedge this bushing and press this bushing out to the edges. Um, and then we have a certain, a certain amount that we like to do it. But the reason why you have to do this is because if you do not swedge that bushing out before you cut them to your size, when official on on the first startup on your engine, it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna go and swedge it out anyways and it's gonna make your clearance way off and way bigger than how it should be. So the perk in swedging them beforehand is you swedge them, it squishes the bushing out to the side and then you cut them so that on right when the engine starts up, it's right at your perfect spec and it doesn't get any bigger after that. What this, this is my swedger here and I'm gonna show you how I swedge them. So like I said, if you are not swedging these bushings, you are just not doing it correctly. And when that first initial startup happens, it's not gonna be the right clearance. Okay, so this is our bushing boring machine. And I'm gonna show you guys how we cut the bushings on um, these rods to the, to the right clearance. And what's cool about this machine is it's actually setting it off. So I have the standard rod and it's actually setting it off the, the length of this rod. So it's gonna put when I cut that bushing, it's gonna put it perfectly center to center in, of these two holes. So that way you have your right um, your right length spec and all that is figured out. So that bushing, it, it's meant to press in and then bore. Like you have to bore it to size. It's not, it's not ready to no, go. No, it's not ready to put a wrist. You couldn't even put a wrist pin in it right now. I have a wrist pin right here. And as you can see it, it don't even go in. Okay. So it needs to be bored to size. So as you see, I have my standard rod set up here in here, and this is gonna. This is basically my machine setup part, 
and this is going to set up the center of this hole to the center of this hole so that when I put that rod in, it's going to put the center of this pin bushing exactly how this standard is. The same exact height as this standard rod is from center to center. Okay. Eight tenths. Eight tenths of a thousandth. Eight this this is thousand. our my zero for this is the exact size of our of our uh, wrist pin. Wrist pin, and so I want to be eight to twelve tenths over zero for that, and that'll give us eight to twelve tenths for oil of or? oil clearance. Make sure our pin fits in there smoothly and good. See that looks really nice, spins good. Oh, yeah. And then we're gonna make sure, again, that our length is right. You can see that that's perfect. So Bob that there is a done rebuilt rod. Besides, or never mind, it's not done yet. Still has to be balanced. We're balancing them, right? I don't know. <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy here. Didn't you say that you wanted them balanced or something? You tell me, man. I don't know. This is a first time for me. Oh. <laughs> we're here with Dylan now, and we're going to balance these rods, right? Yes. So how, what's the process of that? All right, so first, after they've been, go through whatever they do over there. I go over here and first I measure this big end. And you see we have this zeroed, not really zeroed, at one kilogram or 1,000 grams, which is why we have all the weights and everything right here on this scale. And what we're trying to measure here is this bigger half, the part of the rod that connects to the crankshaft. So as you can see, that's 2.498. There's no point writing all that down, so I write down 498. And I went through all these rods, and I already measured them all. And this one was 498, then 496, 496, 499, 496, and 496. Riley uh, got this crankshaft mounted up here on the, is this the balancing machine or what yep. is it? So this is what we balance all of our crankshafts, comes and Duramax on. Okay. It's not, so you balance it first and then you polish it or what, what yep. do you do? So we'll balance, balance them and we have to use grease on here. It sits on two little rubber uh, grommets. So when we're spinning it around at 750 is what we balance them at. Um, we don't want it melting on there. So after they get done here, we got to final wash them. Then they're prepped and ready to go, and then we'll polish off the mains and send it out. Cool. All so, right. first step is we check make sure they're not bent. So, we got a little dial indicator we'll put on the middle bearing here. And then we want to see them perfect, but as long as they're under half, I hardly ever see them moving around at all. So. It's not bent, it'll be good to go on a truck. Okay. And then we move to this side. And we gotta dial in our tailstock. This is the part as it rotates around, that's what's keeping track of where our weight's at. 
And then these are seismic balancers. So wherever the offset is, the computer will tell us exactly how much and where it's at. Okay. Why is it good to have a balanced crank and balanced internals so, in your rig? So it runs smooth. How about okay. that? So something I'm going to jump in here with. Do it. Um, this, <laughs> the, everything I just see, I see the numbers come up here, so that's what made me jump in there. But um, everything that we've found on this engine so far has been pretty legit, right? So Like we've lucked out? Generally, and... A lot of people would laugh that you even are balancing a crankshaft on a 12 valve, right? But everything we do through here is a process, so we, we try to definitely do everything exactly the same. We want it to be under a gram on each side. I've seen Cummins cranks, especially 12 valves, coming in anywhere from 8 to 10. It's pretty common, 5 to 8 grams per side on the crank. This one's 2 and 3. I don't know that us taking it under a half a gram is even going to be worth it be it no we're gonna we're oh, gonna do it okay. we do it to all of them i don't know that you'd notice the difference though in in it or not you know what i mean but we're also gonna have your rods will be balanced your pistons will be balanced the whole rotating assembly will be balanced so that's why we take this step you know people might look at this and be like well that's pretty good like gm they get theirs around 10 to 15 somewhere in that if you're lucky you know we take them to under a grand so all right we're hopefully uh, we'll, we'll drill it out. We'll we'll get this balanced out. We'll our our goal is to be under a gram here and under a gram here. So he's going to walk you through. Riley's going to walk you through those steps, and uh, we're going to get it done. And then we'll get that crank cleaned up, and hopefully it polishes out. If not, we'll have to send it out and get ground, but we'll get something different. But that's the only thing I see wrong with this whole engine so far from the block. The, the rods were kind of messed up, but the only thing I see is some surface rust ended up on these journals and we're going to see if we can clean that up but before we do that we want to final wash it and do a few things we're going to get it balanced because it's all right here then okay. we'll send it in and do all the cleanup part. and since we're not in either spot that we can drill we're going to drill on this side so when we touch in here take out a gram or two it's going to throw our weight onto this side over here to where we can final balance okay. So just taking out that little bit threw us to 16. But we're dead center where we want to be on the counterbalance for where we want to be. So just to verify that we didn't have anything weird, motor wasn't jumping around, we're going to spin it again just to make sure that we have the right uh, placement for our weight before we start drilling. There we go. So now we've got the same measurement twice in a row. So we're going to keep taking off a little bit more on the middle side to bring it back over a little bit. Yeah. Hey Riley, how do you like this balancer? It's uh how does it compare? Is it pretty good? It's pretty good. Some days it's pretty good, some days it wants to throw a fit, but is it the balancer or is it good? User error definitely. <laughs> He's never been able to have the luxury to use any other balancer. If he saw the one that came out of here in this spot, uh oh, this is the baddest ass, top of the line, most expensive balancer on the planet. On the planet? On the planet, for what we do. Yeah. You cannot buy a better one. All right, so we got our 12 valve balance, balance tolerance at half gram on the right side and left side. She's ready to send to the final wash and wrap it up. All right, well, here it is, man. 
<laughs> Brian's ready to throw it back <laughs> in the all dumpster. The all so all, dump all this work once. and we're going to throw it back in the dumpster? Yeah. All right. Yeah. After he's done with it, we'll probably have to throw it in the dumpster. But <laughs> Block turned out amazing. I still am I'm pretty impressed with everything. Look at that crank, how nice that turned out. The head, the head didn't come out of the dumpster, but we rebuilt that. You guys saw that whole process. It was really cool how it all turned out. And uh, I think Scott learned a few things. I don't know. You know what? I think the stars are aligning. I did learn a lot, but everything's coming together. Like, yeah, I'm excited about this I, thing. I'm excited for the next step. I'm excited that you introduced me to Bill. Yeah, that'll and be awesome. Oh we're yeah, gonna get yeah, some. he's he's quite the character. You guys are gonna get to see a little bit of his shop, I think, coming up in this yeah. in this series, and it's just gonna continue on. We've got his block done, his crank, his head, his rods are all balanced up. You guys saw a little bit of that. Pistons are done. I, camshaft, I think we're done with it. There's not much more we can do other than to I'm gonna miss point you in guys. the direction to I'm gonna miss get built. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, take it up to industrial. They'll get it all put together and sim test it. You guys are going to be you'll be in store for a, a pretty awesome episode on sim testing and how we test these blocks once they're put together for oil pressure and making sure that everything's rotating correctly and the oil is going where it should. It's pretty cool to see them kind of operate all opened up. And um, I'm looking forward to see what you do with it. Heck, yeah. So you're going to be part of it. Until so we meet again. I know. I'll see you guys in five minutes. I'll see you guys in five <laughs> on the next one. But. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. See All you right. next time. See you next time. Wait till you see my garage, dude. I'm excited. I guess impromptu sleeping over at All your right, house so tonight. I guess we didn't get as far as we wanted. I guess we didn't get as far as we wanted. <laughs> I'm talking in the microphone. You need some gum. <laughs> <laughs> so we're... Uh, so I'm sleeping over. Is Dustin, Dustin got an air. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Dustin. Yeah. Well, it's kind of annoying. Here, you can flip out the screen. Can we pretend we're, we're oh, here? Yeah. Can we pretend we have a drone? Give me this. You're having too much fun now. Okay. Oh yeah, flip it out so we can see. Yeah, you can see. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So we didn't get as far as we want. We got the. This is almost finished up. This is almost finished up. But uh, I think we're gonna go to my house and I'm gonna show you my little surprise. All right. I have there. And, and you're I'm gonna let you guys. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I like kids' toys. <laughs> Jeez. So the story of that one, the story of that was my my aunt was a boy. If that's how you're gonna drive your new race truck, you're not gonna do so hot, hey, right? Hey, look how good I'm doing. And they brought it and like it was out in our warehouse and like when I was twelve or thirteen. She's like, Do you want this thing? Like, so I had it in my bedroom since I was little. Wow. This is quite the setup down here, Dustin. Or you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a weirdo, obviously, but um, I've been collecting with, I've been collecting Hot Wheels since I can remember, but one of the things I never opened them, you know, I, I do have some that I opened and played with and stuff, but like I, my biggest thing was collecting them and keeping them in the package. I, I actually like the package and the artwork that's on the package more than the, than the, even the car really. But, uh, we're waiting, hold on a second. <laughs> what you doing? But, uh, um, my grandma and her, her sister got me involved in it when I was 12 or 13, like actually collecting and stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, this room, I finally, it's been like three or four months since I've got it put together. I've been collecting and putting this collection together for, I would say, well, my whole life I've been putting it together, but I've never really had a really cool place to display it. So. That's so why I'm going to take you guys in and show you. I haven't shown anybody else, so you guys are getting a first peek, and I'm not showing anybody else. You're going to have to watch this video to see this, what I've created. Let's go. <laughs> I'll let you guys go first. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> I built it. Holy cow. I, but, the, the, there's what's called super treasure hunts, and there's called really treasure hunts. This whole thing is full of treasure hunts. Oh, this is not turned in the right way. Well, I was just turning oh, it. Okay. But these are all treasure hunts. These, everything on this wall right here, I started collecting in 1990. Was some of my first stuff. And I've got, when were you born, Brighton? 
99. <laughs> 10 like, years before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> these are so, Brighton. These are ones like I'd collect with my grandma and stuff when I started. And uh, there's some more in totes and stuff, but. There's a 99 right there. Yeah, there's some 99 ones. There's, you've got like, I think the last ones that I collected in this was the 2000 series. But. And then they changed to this. Do you have any one of whatever's? One of what? One of one. This is oh, that's so every, every, every year, Hot Wheels puts out 250 cars. Oh, so that's what it says, right? 250 or whatever it is. That one's like, some there's, there's, so is this 250 of this one that that's, I made? There's, no. Oh, there's 250 new cars. New cars. So that's one of the castings. And every year, it's hard to see it that, might be, it might be this same exact casting, but they do a different paint job on it and that considers a new car. Yeah. So, I there's so, there's what's called fantasy cars, and then there's what's called. <laughs> Somebody's been playing with this. <laughs> Dad, I tried to turn that off. Yeah, you left. Who my touched my drum set? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so why I why I have these in this case uh -huh. is because these are the first supers that I found. Okay. Like I have treasure hunts from a long time ago, but these were these were kind of cool. Like so, what a super treasure hunt is is th this is a main line. So this this car right here is sitting on the shelf at Walmart, right? And it's cool looking and it's way awesome or whatever. And then there's a certain amount, not very many, that they put one in every so many cases of the super treasure hunt, and it has a Spectra Flame paint job on it, and it has real rubber tires and a two piece wheel. Or these don't. And something different. Darker oh. color usually. So like. <laughs> There's one up there that's worth $500 and I found it at a dollar store. You did? Yep. Wow. 